Indeed. Well, joining me now is South Africa, our ambassador to China. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, welcome home. We haven't seen you here for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. It's uh, nice to be back home in China. Yeah, I'm sure a lot's been going on through our embassy in Beijing, in China, um, in the run-up to all of this, because it wasn't just BRICS, it was also the state visit, very important. There must have been all sorts of negotiations. How busy has it been? It's been very busy. As you know, last year China was hosting BRICS. Mm. That's where we first started this uh, discussion on expansion. Then it was sent to the senior officials. And uh, our embassy has been very busy linking these mm. negotiators uh, since last year. And when we assumed the chairship of BRICS at the beginning of this year, January, uh, uh, then uh, we had more Chinese interacting. Mm. What was good, Stephen, is that uh, <clears throat> from the onset, our sense was that China was always willing to support South Africa to host a successful mm. BRICS summit, mm. because we also always support them to mm. host uh, their successful uh, summit. So that, that's what has been good. Much as one negotiating, but as long as you are negotiating in good faith, and you have got a common objective. Mm. And uh, that was, has been wonderful. It has been a hard work, mm. a lot of hard work mm. behind the uh, doors, but uh, it has borne fruit now mm. because uh, this is a partnership for development, is a partnership for common good for humanity, really. That's how we were viewing it as developing countries. There are so many aspects to it because it's also the, uh, the, only the second time, as I understand it, that President Xi, Xi Jinping, has left um, China. So that tells us two things. One, that the BRICS summit is important, and two, perhaps the state visits was important too. I mean, that's quite a big move for South Africa. That was a, uh, a cherry on top for us. To have a, President Xi doesn't travel a lot. Mm. But uh, since he has been the president uh, the last 10 years, Yes, this is the fourth time mm. he's visiting South Africa. Mm. That's, that's never happened to any country like that. So that just shows you the cordial relationship mm. between these two countries. That China being our largest trading partner, South Africa being the largest trading partner from the African continent by far. So, and this time, this visit, one of the most important besides all these economic and cooperation agreements, was the agreement to align our key programs, mm. the Belt and Road Initiative, which we joined in 2015, with our own economic reconstruction mm. and, 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 uh, and recovery program, which is led by uh, President Ramaphosa. Why they are doing this? They want to take this relation to a higher level. They want faster implementation in terms of cooperation, in terms of supporting each other, so that we can recover and uh, become stronger again and, uh, as trading partners. So there's a lot of agreements, but before I get to the agreements, yes, I'm going to yes. ask you, I'm afraid, it's yes. a very sticky issue. I'm talking about Transnet. Yes. So to, to oversimplify it, um, there's a Chinese company, the Chinese um, Railway Rolling Stock Corporation. They came here, they sold us uh, locomotives. SARS says that they, under, that, they over, that they did not pay as much money as they should have. They should have paid SARS another 3 billion rand. Mm -hmm. They're refusing to help us maintain the locomotives we bought for them. And as a result of all of that, the public enterprises, Mr. Pravin Gordon, went to China. I'm sure you yeah. probably yeah. were the person to receive him to sort that out. We have all of these agreements. We have all of these very important words that we yes. want to work together. We need Transnet to work. And I don't see any resolution anywhere to that. <laughs> we're moving. Uh, uh, it has been uh, difficult because Chinese were not happy when we cancelled this agreement. Sure, we've, called, we've accused them but, of corruption. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, uh, it depends on the partners they have here. Yeah. Uh, not that uh, corruption is not tolerated in China. No, I know. Yeah. Yes. So, <clears throat> but the way we cancelled, they were not happy. Mm. Uh, President sent uh, Minister Gordon mm. in May. He came in Beijing. We worked very close with him. I attended all these mm. meetings where we're trying to resolve, find a makeable mm. way to resolve this because we need to increase our stock, our rail mm. stock, in terms of transportation and improve mm. uh, transportation of goods, particularly between Gauteng and, 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 and Devon. So they were difficult, but we have made progress. I monitor this all the time. I speak to the CEO of Transnet. They are now the team from China, they come here, they are negotiating, they'll be able to settle this problem. Because we need to cooperate, we need more 
railway trucks mm. to take the goods so that we can shift the goods from the roads to rail. And uh, that's a more efficient system of dealing with trade. And uh, because, uh, as you know, we have this largest container terminal in mm. Durban, but we're expanding it. We now we think about concessional mm. railway line. We need more railway mm. running stock. Mm. And uh, my sense is that I think we are through the negotiations and through the mutual trust, they have established the contact. The teams are working very closely to resolve that matter. I mean, it's one percentage point economic growth for us. It really matters. That's it's, a lot of jobs. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. If you don't have the logistic, you can't run a modern economy. So the transnet logistic and the transportation of goods and the faster transportation of goods would not just relieve the pressure on our, on our road, but if we transport them quicker, it's good for our producers. Sure. It's also good for the importers. It facilitates trade. So <clears throat> I'm quite confident that I'm saying I'm following the, on this matter as a representative of South Africa and the People's Republic of China. It's my task to follow on these things and resolve conflicts where there are conflicts and maintain and enhance friendship and trade between our two countries. An easier topic, I think. Um, the agreements that were signed this week between, uh, the Repub between China and our electricity minister, Dr. Jose Ansura Makopo, Minister of Electricity in the Presidency, I should say. Yes. I mean, that's a really important demonstration, isn't it? Yes, because uh, <coughs> uh, Minister Ramakopo came to China. We, we took him because we have seen some of these technologies, both in state-owned companies but also in private companies. And uh, we were saying some of them may be good for our country in terms of resolving. He came with engineers. Mm. They were assessing this and uh, he invited some of these companies. They came here to demonstrate and see what they can do. And that's why now they sign because they need to find a way of cooperating. China uh, has got a lot of these state, big state owned companies, but they managed to restructure them successfully and creating them to compete against each other, even for production. And uh, that's how I know that they've came out of the energy challenges and uh, their energy reliability is much, 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 much higher. They've come up with new transmission technologies to integrate mm. the renewables and uh, the old uh, fossil fuels transmission because our designs were designed for fossil fuel. So Minister Ramakupa and I is working with these companies because we are building quite a large number of renewables in South Africa. But to integrate them is not an easy task because uh, you must know how to integrate them, how do we transform our transmission mechanism, how do I pay you mm. if I take uh, mm. from your solar panels at mm. home and, mm. and, uh, and make sure that it's a fair price, I'm paying mm. you, are not robbing me and I'm not robbing you. So those are the technologies they are bringing. But they are also bringing emergency technologies like the equipment they've been donating mm. to our government because we saw some of these equipment. We felt, wow. Mm. If this thing can be done, how much is it? It's for, for hospitals and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's mm. very important mm. for critical mm. infrastructure like hospitals and some of the key mm. in, in installations that they must be protected from low shading. So they are donating this, some of these and they are giving concessional uh, loans for other, for other equipment. We are very grateful because when we first dis discussed these things, they were saying, no, they are aid is for least developed countries. Mm. We are not the least developed countries, mm. but we kept on saying we are friends. Mm. <laughs> because when our leaders mm. met, mm. they said that they define our relationship as a relationship of friends and mm. comrades. So we always use it, but we are friends. <laughs> and guess what? Mm. They did. They yeah, did yeah. consider because they all like the South Africa economy going mm. down. Sure. They like us to rise together. And then the expansion of BRICS, which was announced today. Wow. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a major shift. And China, I mean, it's by consensus. Hmm. But, I mean, China is such, was such a big sort of part of BRICS. Um, was that difficult to negotiate behind the scenes? I mean, or was there sort of general consensus and you just kept no, it from us? <laughs> like I'm saying, we, are five, we were five independent yes. countries with the independent foreign policies. But the good thing about BRICS, uh, Stephen, is that uh, <clears throat> we... Don't vote. Mm. We take decisions by consensus. 
And uh, people always say, no, nah, that takes long, but just vote. We never vote. Mm. We listen to each other and, uh, and drive ourselves. We emphasize points of agreement and points of disagreement. Mm. And uh, that's what has happened here. We emphasize more on what we are doing mm. upon. What was always important is the principle that this BRICS was never conceived as an exclusive club. Sure. It is a, a forum for developing countries to have a voice, to cooperate, so that we can also develop our people, but also develop and help other developing nations grow. We look at our bank. It's a new bank, the new development bank mm. in Shanghai. Uh, last year we were announcing new members, mm. but uh, because people, they see benefits from it. Uh, when we're faced with a uh, COVID-19, mm. each of us, we paid equal amounts. Mm. Remember when we joined, mm. we're paying 10 billion US dollars each. So when we're faced with crisis of COVID, we're able to draw 2 billion US dollars each mm. because no one expected the, the COVID. So people are seeing these good things. But now that uh, we have set up a criteria because last year we said, we must start working on the criteria. Mm. So that whatever we do doesn't divide developing nations. That that criteria was agreed by our leaders here in South Africa, in Johannesburg. Mm. Uh, I think South Africans should feel very proud mm. of the support and cooperation we have with these BRICS partners because they trust each other, they respect each other, so that's why it's easy for them mm. to reach consensus, even when, because they are looking at the, at the greater good. Mm. Could you imagine if we couldn't make any announcement yeah. here? People were starting to lose hope, but they, it was difficult, but they reached this consensus. We are happy that two of these countries are from the African continent, mm. and, uh, but most all of these countries are good trading partners mm. with South Africa. And uh, it, it, it augurs well for our economy and for our people and our people's relations. So, I mean, it's interesting that two of them come from Africa, because do you see that as a win for Africa? You know, Ethiopia uh, and Egypt. I mean, yeah. Egypt, Egypt, I must just say, Egypt has a complicated identity. No, Egypt is the African country. <laughs> Go and ask yeah, them that. They, they, no, 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 they, they, they know. Yeah. They, they are Arabs. Yeah, yeah. But they, they are African okay. countries. Yeah. Uh, the, <clears throat> it is important. It's an important uh, signal that Africa is not left behind. Mm -hmm. Because we often forgotten in most of these developments. Uh, uh, that uh, these countries, I'm sure more because there were more African countries, mm. as our president mm. has said, that our ministers, foreign minister, must go and consider these other applications and see how, mm. what, how do we admit more, whether on full membership like this or partnership, they'll come with that criteria next year, advice to the head of state. So <clears throat> to us, when we join BRICS as South Africa, you recall that we always put the issue of African development sure. as a key. Mm. Even when we joined first, we were first invited in 2010, mm. when we first hosted the summit, mm. we were the first to bring the concept of uh, uh, <clears throat> inviting beyond the BRICS partners. And the BRICS countries, other BRICS partners accepted this. We call it the Aldrich mm. program. And then China, when they hosted later, they brought BRICS Plus. Mm. So this morning we're having a BRICS Plus and a BRICS Outreach mm. meeting, which is a good thing mm. because you also consult these developing countries and see what are the real needs, where are the areas of cooperation. It's a very important consultation uh, forum for, for the BRICS leaders. And that's why it's easy for, for us to take steps forward in terms of uh, increasing even the BRICS family. Mm. Um, so, I mean, within all of this, and it must be very interesting to be our ambassador yeah. to China, because South Africa at the moment, uh, I was making the point to someone earlier, you know, it can sometimes be seen as caught between sort of, you know, West and BRICS. I mean, that's completely oversimplified. Yeah. <laughs> but it must be very interesting for you yeah. to be in Beijing to see all of this play out. Yeah. Do you think that we're getting pulled one way or another, or pushed or jostled, or do you think we're yeah. very comfortable where we are? We are very comfortable. As South Africa, we're very clear in terms of our foreign policy mm. that uh, we'll have the relations with all the countries of the world. We're having the relations, very good relations with China. 
who are having relations with the development mm. who have not damned them in terms of why they are still significant investors mm. and we still got good relations with them. We take the best for mm. what is best for South Africa. And that's why we always proud ourselves of having independent foreign policy. That's mm. very important. And uh, what drives us is uh, what is a key interest and benefit for our people. We trade with the U.S. Mm. China is our number one trading partner. Mm. The second one, I think, is, uh, is uh, Germany. The third one is the U.S. Mm. And then even when there are conflicts between these big powers, mm. we always say, no, 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 no. Please don't make us choose. Mm. Yes. <laughs> we don't choose. Yes. We take the best, what mm. is best for South mm. Africa. That has been, uh, we are very comfortable with that position. And that's how we earn respect in the global community as South African that we have got independent foreign policy, but we stand for the partner mm -hmm. with those who are pushing for peace, for multilateralism, for the common development of mankind. Thank you. <laughs> I know so many people, Mr. Ambassador, who will disagree with that, but I understand your point. <laughs> I'm not going to get into you. it now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, nice to have you back in South Africa. I hope you um, get to enjoy some of your time while you're at home. Thank you. And thank you thank very much you. indeed you for uh, this. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's thank nice you. to see you, thank sir. You. The you. Our Ambassador to China, Siabonga Kwele, you may remember, of course, the role he's played in our society for many years. A lot more live coverage to come from our team here and our guests here on News from Africa Channel 405. Our live and continuing coverage of the BRICS Summit, do I call it the BRICS Plus Summit now, will continue.